Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Zaheer and today we'll be attempting to create a multi-agent orchestrator. My sincere apologies uh, for not pushing the video out on a Sunday. Uh, I was very busy with work and some personal commitments. Now, this should not happen in the future. I'm hoping it shouldn't. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, this is essentially an extension of my very first video. Let me go back to that video so that you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so this is the video how I built an AI agent from scratch. This is an extension. I'm using the same code, but introducing an orchestrator to essentially, uh, you know, orchestrate uh, actions or steps between multiple agents. All right. Uh, so with that, let's get started. I want to quickly run the code first and hoping that it works. All right. So let me quickly run that. So what is the time and temperature in Bengaluru. All right, so it, this time it worked. It has identified the agent and it is telling me that the weather in Bangalore is currently missed with a temperature of 22.11 degrees centigrade. The current timing in Bangalore is yet to be provided. Uh, it didn't take in, it didn't execute the way I wanted it to basically to finish getting the time as well as uh, the the temperature is only got the temperature. It knows that it's supposed to get time, but it's responded back. So I'm going to ask it get time. So it has found the agent. It identified that Bengaluru is uh, Bengaluru's time zone is Asia Cal Asia Kolkata, and it is figuring out uh, basically hitting that particular tool and getting the response. The final response is. The weather in Bengaluru is currently missed with temperature of 22.11 degrees centigrade and the current time in Bengaluru is uh, it's 12.27 in the night. All right. Uh, worked as expected, not the first time, but you know, it's, it's worked the way I wanted to. All right, let's see how this was put together. Now, before I talk about this particular, the, the before I talk about the code, I want to talk about uh, the basic agent that we had created you know, a couple of months ago. A basic agent essentially has three components, right? One is the reasoning loop, uh, the tool, uh, and the model. The model essentially, you, you leverage an LLM uh, to essentially reason and decide what next action you know you want to take. The reasoning loop is basically you combine uh, responses and the response of the tool and the response of an LLM to add more context for the next query. Uh, uh, that you send to an LLM and tool essentially is a list of tools that you want to leverage for a specific task. We've, we've seen this, you can go back to the video to look at this. All right, but today uh, the intent that we just saw is to essentially create a multi-agent orchestrator that takes in an input and identifies the intent and selects appropriate agent. Uh, the agent then selects the appropriate tool to execute the task, a standard use case of a multi-agent orchestrator. All right, now let's quickly go to the editor and look at the code. First look at the agent class. Uh, this is base agent, very similar to the class. In fact, it's an exact copy of the class that we had created the, the last time. Um, this code has been written in haste. It's not like a production ready code. This is a, a code that you can easily follow and run in your machine. Uh, the agent class essentially has uh, a constructor that takes in uh, name, description, and tools, a list of tools in the model name, some a standard agent input that we see in several agentic frameworks today, right? I've created this JSON parser because I've been dealing with a lot of incorrect JSON responses. You don't have to do this, uh, but you know, I've just I've just written this so that you know you can parse any kind of response from an LLM. Uh, every agent has a process input uh, you know method. The idea is that you know it it essentially takes an input uh, and also looks at the number of tools that it has and decides which tool it needs to use and execute that particular task. Very simple, all right. Uh, it calls uh, an LLM here that is query LLM, and uh, we always provide that with uh, context. Since we are making only one LLM call uh, per uh, per task, so you know, this part probably is not required because we expect the reasoning to happen in the orchestrator. All right. Uh, you might want to quickly pay attention to the uh, the prompt. It's a very simple prompt. Let me show you the prompt. I am providing uh, the LLM with the number of tools that we have for this particular agent. 
uh, and the agent instance that we'll create, we'll talk about it. And we'll also, uh, uh, we'll, if you look at it here, uh, you know, we are saying that you use the input, uh, the query from the user and the context uh, to decide which tool you need to use and essentially, you know, perform the task or select the, the appropriate tool, pass uh, the argument. So remember, I'm explicitly not telling what, uh, what kind of argument it needs. It, I want it to figure out what kind of argu argument it needs to send to that particular tool because, you know, your tool could be an API call. It, your tool could be a you know a SQL query. It could uh, basically a database, a call to a database, or a query to a database. It could be anything, right? So you'd want to make appropriate uh, or create appropriate arguments to the tool that you're leveraging. All right. Uh, this is uh, sort of a you know hack that I used to essentially send the control back to the uh, the user, where I say they just respond. If you, if, if you think that you know you have everything, you've solved everything, you don't have to take any action. Just you know, respond back to the user with uh, adding uh, you know your response and context uh, and your thought as you know as an you know as the argument and send it back to the the user. Right? This is a simple agent class. The orchestrator is something that you would probably be interested to know how this works. Right? Uh, let me reduce this. I'm hoping that you are able to see the screen as expected. Edge. Uh, the orchestrator is simple. It's it takes a list of agents as uh, you know as input. Uh, there is a constructor as you can see. It takes a list of agents. I've also added a JSON parser. I could you write a simple util class to do that. My apologies for you know not following practices, but this is a quick illustration of what the orchestrator looks like. Uh, we have the orchestrator task here, as you can see. Uh, this is a method that basically takes in an input uh, and essentially uh, you know uh, takes in uh, the context and the context essentially is, you know, the history of the conversation history between the user, uh, the agent's response, as well as the orchestrator's response, right? And uh, I've also illustrated what kind of format it needs to return the, you know, response of. Uh, there is an action. Action is essentially what next step should I? Sorry, what what action should I take currently for the user for the current uh, user input? Input is I could have renamed it better, but input is essentially, uh, you know, what is the the framing or the reframing of uh, the question that uh, the original question basically break it down uh, and reframe the question so that the appropriate tool can be selected and the next action uh, what is the next action if there are multiple actions or multiple tasks that you the user give, gives in one single query the llm can easily you know decide or the orchestrator can easily decide which uh, agent it needs to call as well as you know uh, if it has already finished one task, what is the next task it needs to execute? I think if you edit that part out, it should still work. But I have arrived at this after you know several iterations today, so you might want to you know you might want to play around and edit the prompt. All right. Uh, the all important prompt for the orchestrator. There are a few guidelines and base instructions. I'm asking it to use uh, the context from memory. I could probably rephrase that. But the idea here is that uh, we collect or add the response of the orchestrator, add the response of the agent that has executed the task, as well as uh, the original user query as context uh, to an LLM in the orchestrator. That's the idea. And the reason we, want, we intend to do that is the LLM needs to know what the user, original user input is, what, are, what was the current uh, or what was the previous action it took, and what is the next action it, it needs to take. Simple, all right. Um, I, we are obviously providing it with the list of agents and the agent name and description so that it can act, act, uh, essentially uh, pick the relevant uh, you know, agent depending on the input. Because remember, we are calling it an orchestrator so that it can uh, essentially take a user input and classify what that input is based on the intent and select the appropriate agent. Simple, all right. Guidelines. You know, written in you know, a very rough format. Let me just clean this up. You can actually add your own guidelines, uh, give it as many instructions as possible, but in a brutish or a manner I've written this. So sometimes you might have to use multiple agents to solve your user input. You have to do that in a loop. The original user input could have multiple tasks. You'll use the context to understand the previous actions taken and the next step you should take. Read the context, take your time to understand, see if there were many tasks and if you executed them all. If there are no actions to be taken, then make the action respond to user, something that we've copied from the agent class with your final thoughts, combining all previous responses and input. 
uh, and you will obviously return the format in a valid JSON. Uh, so return the response in a valid JSON, right? That's the input. Simple. The the LLM essentially we we send that send that query uh, to the LLM. The LLM essentially you know returns the name of the agent. Uh, we execute we call that particular agent uh, by calling the agent dot process input, and then essentially the agent finishes the task, responds uh, uh, basically uh, sends a response back, and then we if this is the important part. This is where the reasoning happens, right? Now, if the response doesn't have a response to user, we essentially send that as you know as an input back to the orchestrator, telling it that there are you know tasks pending and it needs to execute. All right. And once it has finished all the tasks, it sends response to user. And depending on that, we print the final response on the screen and take are ready to take the next input from the user. Very simple, right? Uh, let me look, let me show you the main.py file. It's a very simple class. As you can see, I am instantiating two agents. One is a weather agent. The other one is a time agent. Uh, the name is weather agent. Description is uh, provides weather information for a given location. Not at all, you know, uh, you don't need to be very explicit because I think LLMs today can easily, depending on very little information, can actually uh, identify the purpose of that particular agent. We we are obviously passing tools. We are passing a weather tool here, but depending on the kind of agent you're writing, you could have one tool or several tools. Um, and the other agent uh, we have created here as part of the demo is uh, uh, the time agent. Time agent essentially takes the input as a location and responds with uh, the current time of that particular location. Uh, again, we we pass the time tool here. Time tool is essentially let me let me actually show you both the tools, whether tool as well as a time tool. Uh, just like uh, in the previous video, we were using a, a base class uh, and essentially an abstract class called tools with abstract methods, name, description, and use. And if I show you the tool, you'll understand how it is written. Simple. We are telling what the name of the tool is, what the description of the tool is. Provides for, in case of the time tool, provides the current time for a given city's time zone. And if no time is provided, it returns the local time. And this this is an interesting bit here, right? Because I want I want you guys to understand that the user will only provide a location. For example, you know what is the current time in in let's say Bengaluru or Mumbai or New York, uh, you're not giving it the time zone. How many you know users will probably know the time zone? Not many. In fact, nobody. Ninety percent would not know what the time zone is, right? So you just give the location. Uh, we are adding this description so that the LLM knows that it needs to get the relevant time zone for that particular uh, you know uh, for that particular city, and pass that as you know, an argument to the time tool. That's the idea that we want the LLM to basically do that. That's why, uh, you know, the detailed description helps. All right. Uh, and we are simply returning based on the time zone. We are simply returning the time for that particular city. Simple, right? The next thing we will do is we look at the weather tool. Weather tool is essentially we're using uh, open weather map uh, to get the current weather of that particular location that we are giving. Uh, it's a very simple tool. Same again, we we call the name out. We there is we provide more uh, detailed information, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So if you if you go back to main.py, you can see that there are two agents, and we instantiate the agent orchestrator and pass the list of agents uh, here as as uh, as an argument, and we start the agent agent orchestrator dot run. So in fact, let me run that again. Let me clear screen. Let me actually start with a different city this time. Uh, remember, I've just created two agents, which is basically a weather agent, time agent. You can create n number of agents. I'm sure the the orchestrator can do a very good job of identifying the task and basically executing them one by one. All right, so what is the current time in Austin. A lot of friends stay there. And what is the current time in what is the current time? And
and temperature. in Austin. All right, so it has identified the weather agent, it has executed that and given the response back. What I don't like uh, is the way it never executes the next stack. It, it knows that it's supposed to provide the current time, but just doesn't you know, execute that. That's fine, I think I'll have to maybe tune the prompt a bit to you know, uh, get this output. I'm just gonna say get time. It has a context, it knows to get time. It identified the time zone for Austin, America, Chicago. I don't know if that's the time zone, I'm sorry. Um, and we should be getting the response in a bit. All right, so the current time in Austin is uh, 1.11.55. Yeah, that should be it. Actually, it's 12.42, yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. The weather is overcast, uh, it's 12.42 in Bangalore, by the way, 12.42 in the night. And the weather is over class clouds with temperature of 14.56 degrees centigrade. All right, this is great. All right, guys, this is all in this particular video. Uh, you can actually do a lot more things with the multi-agent orchestrator. You can run you know, tasks in parallel and then return a final response back. Can probably enhance this uh, as as we continue to you know or experiment more with the orchestrator. Uh, but the idea is to you know help you understand how you can actually create your own agents and you know orchestrate. Uh, uh, the the workflow and uh, you know tasks uh, between multiple agents and execute them one by one and build that reasoning capability. Um, all right, so with that we conclude this particular video and uh, you know I'd request you guys to you know share this with your network, uh, share your you know thoughts uh, on the uh, in the comment section and uh, please like and subscribe the channel. All right, thank you so much. You have a good one. Bye.